Hello, today I am going to be talking to you about female pelvis. This is an articulated human pelvis. It is made up of the following bones. The right and the left innominate bones, the sacrum and the coccyx. These bones articulate with one another at the following joints. Anteriorly, the joint between the two pubic bones is called as the pubic symphysis. The joint between the ilium and the sacrum is known as the sacroiliac synchondrosis. This is the right and this is the left sacroiliac synchondrosis joint. The joint between the sacrum and the coccyx is a weak joint called as the sacrococcygeal joint. This is the pelvic rim or inlet. Anatomical landmarks on the pelvic rim are pubic symphysis, pubic crest, pubic tubercle, pectineal line, iliopubic eminence, iliopectineal line, sacroiliac synchondrosis, anterior border of ala of sacrum, sacral promontory, and corresponding landmarks on the opposite side. The pelvic rim divides the pelvis into false pelvis above and true pelvis below. It is a true pelvis which is of obstetric significance and will be discussed in detail. The true pelvic cavity is arbitrarily divided into four planes. The plane of inlet or apertura pelvis superior which is the same as the pelvic rim. The plane of greatest pelvic dimensions which extends from the middle of the posterior surface of pubic symphysis to junction of second and third sacral vertebra and laterally along the pelvic wall where there are no landmarks. The plane of least pelvic dimensions extends from the inferior border of pubic symphysis to S45 junction according to some or sacrococcygeal junction according to others. The plane of outlet consists of two triangles in different planes. The anterior triangle is formed by the ischial pubic rema and the ischial tuberosities and the posterior triangle is formed by the two ischial tuberosities and tip of the coccyx. These four planes are not parallel to one another because the anterior wall that is the pubic symphysis is much shorter than the posterior wall which is the sacrum. Therefore, a line joining the center of the four planes which is called as the axis of the pelvis is not a straight line but a J-shaped curve called as the curve of Keras. Now I will describe the essential diameters. Essential diameter is defined as the diameter of pelvis which when reduced by 1 cm or more will affect the mechanism of normal labor. There are 5 essential diameters in the pelvic cavity that are of obstetric significance. The AP diameter of the inlet is 11 cm. In the plane of greatest pelvic dimension, there are no diameters of obstetric significance. There are two essential diameters in the plane of least pelvic dimensions. These are the anterior posterior diameter which is 11.5 cm and the interspinous diameter which is 10.5 cm. It is the narrowest part of the pelvic cavity. The AP diameter of the outlet extends from the inferior border of pubic symphysis to the tip of the coccyx which is 9.5 plus 2 that is 11.5 cm and the transverse diameter of the outlet which is the intertubular diameter is 11 cm and is the same as the anterior posterior diameter of the inlet. There are two more diameters which are of obstetric significance. The diameter which is actually available to the fetal head when it passes to the inlet extends from a point on the maximum convexity of the posterior surface of the pubic symphysis to the midpoint of the sacral promontory and this is called as the obstetric conjugate or the available AP diameter of the inlet. It is 9.7 cm. Besides this, there is another diameter that can be measured clinically that is the diagonal conjugate. It is measured from the inferior border of pubic symphysis to midpoint of sacral promontory. It is 12.5 cm. The diagonal conjugate minus 1.5 gives the true conjugate. Now I will describe the angles of the pelvis. When the woman is in the standing position, the pelvic cavity is inclined with the horizontal in such a way that the two anterior superior iliac spines and the pubic symphysis are in the same vertical plane. In this position, the angle formed by the AP diameter of the inlet with the horizontal is called as the angle of pelvic inclination. It is 55 to 60 degrees. When the angle is increased, it is obstetrically bad. 
the angle formed by the AP diameter of the inlet with a straight line joining the first two sacral vertebra is called as the sacral angle. It is 90 degrees. When the angle is increased, it means that the pelvic cavity becomes narrow as one goes downwards and this is obstetrically bad. The angle formed by the two ischiopubic rami at the pubic symphysis is called as the subpubic angle. It is 90 degrees. When it is decreased, the so-called subpubic waste space of Morris is increased and this is obstetrically bad as it would lead to perineal tears if the head were to deliver. And lastly, I will talk about the Caldwell Monoi classification of pelvis. According to them, there are four basic types of pelvis based on the shape of the inlet and the slope of the pelvic side walls. In the gynecoid pelvis, seen in 50% of women, the shape of the inlet is round and the side walls are parallel. In the anthropoid pelvis, seen in 25% of women, the shape of the inlet is anteroposterally oval and the side walls are parallel. In the android pelvis, seen in 20% of women, the inlet is triangular and the side walls are convergent. And in the platypoloid pelvis, seen in 5% of women, the inlet is transversely oval and the side walls are divergent. For further reading on this topic and other topics, refer to following textbooks written by me. Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology Modern Obstetrics Modern Gynecology Clinical Cases in Obstetrics Questions and Answers and Pelvic Reconstructive Surgery